Hitler received a $247 million house for his 50th birthday and almost never used it. Today, we're exploring Kelstein House, or in English, the Eagle's Nest. The Eagle's Nest was Hitler's hideout house, located at the top of Kelstein, a 2,522 meter high mountain in the Bergdesgaden Alps, near the southeast German town of Bergdesgaden. Built from 1937 to 1938, it was used exclusively by members of the Nazi party for government and social meetings. Despite the cost of $247 million, Hitler actually never liked the house, mainly because of the high altitude. Instead, he preferred to stay down in Obersalzburg, where he and the other leaders of the Nazi party lived in a heavily guarded village. To be more precise, Hitler's favourite building where he spent most of his time was a tea house on Muslana Kopf Hill. Every day after lunch, Hitler would take a walk to this tea house to have some tea. I wonder what his reaction would have been if he had lived long enough to find out that the tea house got demolished by the Bavarian government after the war due to its connection with Hitler himself. Kelstein House was used only as a diplomatic reception building and a private entertainment cave, particularly for Hitler's girlfriend Ava Braun and her friends. The more you know about this house, the more you ask yourself, was Hitler crazy for not liking this house? Well, arguably for many reasons. We'll start off with the journey you must go through to get to the house. Once you travel 6.5 kilometers on a narrow road with huge drops, five tons and a hairpin turn, you reach a large car park below the house. The house itself is located a further 124 meters beyond the car park, but in order to get there, Hitler and his party would have needed to walk 124 more meters to get through the double door tunnel. Hitler never actually walked this and would always tell his driver to drive him into the tunnel. The driver would have to drive in, then reverse the whole way back out the tunnel since there was no space to turn around. The tunnel is lined with marble and was originally heated with warm air from an adjoining service tunnel. The main use of the tunnel was a hallway to the elevator. Imagine pushing a button and ascending in 1938. The elevator was decorated with Venetian mirrors, polished brass fittings, a black telephone, an original clock, and much more. Once you entered the elevator and heard a ding, you'd find yourself in Kelstein House's main reception room, dominated by a fireplace of red Italian marble that Benito Mussolini gifted to Hitler. The fireplace was damaged by Allied soldiers. They used it to chip off pieces to take home as souvenirs and crave in their signatures. The damaged fireplace is still visible today, just as some of the signatures left by US soldiers. Even though this was 1937, the Eagle's kitchen was equipped with electric appliances. What's interesting is that the Kelstein House kitchen was never used to cook meals. Instead, meals were prepared in town and taken to the kitchen on the mountaintop to be reheated. Even today, a house like this would be considered luxurious. But wait until I tell you that it even had heated floors. Yes, heated floors in 1937. When it comes to furniture, it was more than comfortable. The majority of it was designed by Paul Laszlo, a Hungarian born architect and interior designer. The main room was a circular great hall There was clad in granite blocks on the exterior and sandstone on the interior. The centerpiece was a large wooden table capable of accommodating up to 30 hungry diners, sitting on an expensive carpet that was a gift from the Japanese ambassador. Whilst on top of the table there was 18 square meters of white linen tablecloth, handmade to order by the Munich-based company DS, costing 2,600 Reichsmark, which is the equivalent to around $14,000 today. The original windows of the great hall could be lowered into the walls to to allow for open air views. The room next to the Great Hall was called the Scharitz Kelzimmer, but it's better known as Ava's room since she loved to spend time there. The Goblin tapestry on the wall cost 24,000 Reichsmarks in 1938, which converts to about $103,000 today. The tapestry was taken by a US soldier in 1945, but was returned to Germany by the soldier's family in 2016. Ava's room served as an access to the Sun Terrace, and the view from it was breathtaking. You got to see the Hohe Goal, the Vatsman, and the Hohe Mountains, which are very cold and windy. In the event of a power cut, an MAN submarine diesel engine and an electrical generator were installed in an underground chamber close to the main entrance to provide backup power. I'm eager to find out who got the idea to make and decorate all this, starting with the tunnel and finishing off with the $14,000 linen cloth. Well, the man in charge of construction was Martin Bormann, the head of the Nazi party chancellery and a private secretary to Adolf Hitler and one of his right-hand men. Martin Bormann commissioned the Kelstein House, which was paid for by the Nazi party in a short period of time. It took them only 13 months to build the road, car park, tunnel, and the house itself, and the objects in the house. Hence, that may be the reason why 12 workers died during the construction. Hitler's 50th birthday in April 1939 was set as a deadline for the project's completion, so construction continued in building the house throughout the winter of 1938, even at night with the worksite lit by searchlights. The Eagle's Nest had its own security gate that sat a few hundred meters before you'd even reach the car parking. It was built for security reasons, and if you were unauthorized trying to get into the Eagle's Nest, not 
only would Hitler's security stop you, but it would also make you unable to ever try entering again. The main question is, did Hitler really put that much trust into Martin Bormann to let him spend 30 million Reichsmarks which translates to about $247 million today. Without him knowing what Martin was spending the Nazi party's money on. No, Martin was Hitler's right-hand man, but you forgot that Hitler wasn't easily fooled. Kelstein House was supposed to be a big surprise for Hitler's upcoming 50th birthday, but of course, Hitler had to find out what was going on. Since Martin was spending all of this money, Hitler decided to visit the construction site on the 16th of September 1938, despite his birthday being the 20th of April of the following year. That was the first time Hitler ever saw his nest. He visited the house on his birthday to attend the grand opening and probably pretended to be surprised and he said he had no clue Martin had done all of this. But then he also said he didn't like it. When I said Hitler barely used the house, I meant it. In total, he had visited the Kelstein house only 14 times. At least we now know he didn't lie when he said he didn't like the house, which was absurd. Also, when I said Hitler's driver drove him straight to the elevator through the tunnel, that only happened once. Hitler also disliked using the elevator because he didn't trust it. He once stated that his big biggest fear was that the elevator's winch mechanism on the roof would attract a lightning strike, so instead he always ordered his driver to drive him in front of the house via the second road. Exactly one month and two days after his first visit, Hitler welcomed departing French ambassador André François Ponce on the 18th of October 1938 to the Kelstein House. Many people still don't know how Kelstein House got its second name, the Eagle's Nest. Well, it was André who coined that name while describing the time he spent with Hitler. The happiest event that took place in this house wasn't a victory celebration, since the Nazis didn't win. But believe it or not, it was a wedding. Ava Braun's sister, Gretel, and her husband, Hermann Fegerlein, had a wedding at this place on the 3rd of June, 1944. Hitler usually left the entertaining duties to others, and believed that the house was an excellent place to entertain and welcome important and impressionable guests. But less than a year after the wedding took place, it became a target for the bombing of Ober Salzburg on the 25th of April, 1945, just five days before Hitler committed suicide. This was a Royal Air Force bombing raid conducted by four Royal Air Force operation groups. Despite being a primary target, Kelstein House remained untouched, but instead the bombing severely damaged the Berghof area, located underneath the Eagle's Nest. Some sources even say that the members of one of the operation groups reached Kelstein House as far as the elevator, and one soldier stated that he and his partner got into the elevator and entered the house. On the night of the 4th of May 1945, even more British troops entered the house and took Hitler's personal items and several photographs before the Americans arrived. Before leaving on the 10th of May at the request of the US command, Spanish soldiers who went along with them said the same thing. For some reason, these guys really wanted to bring souvenirs home from the Eagle's Nest. Undamaged in the 25th of April air raid, the Kelstein House was used by the Allies as a military command post until 1960, when it was handed back to the state of Bavaria. Since then, many things have changed. As of today, the building is owned by a charitable trust and serves as a restaurant offering indoor dining and an outdoor beer garden. It's a popular tourist attraction due to its historical significance. The road has been closed to private vehicles since 1952 because it's too narrow for two-way travel and most of the people get on the bus that takes them to the parking lot below the house or walk for two hours. The road is so steep and slippery that the buses had to be specifically modified. Unfortunately, Kelstein House's new interior offers little information about its past. Hitler's small study is now a storeroom for the cafeteria and most of the house has been modernized except for the lower rooms that offer views of the building's past through plate glass windows. Comment down below if you think that a museum is a better option instead of a restaurant, since this house holds significant historical value. As always, don't forget to like the video and click on screen to continue learning with Bite Notes. Bite into brilliance, anytime, anywhere.